What's up guys, how you doing? Welcome back to AFC Game by Game. This is my review of our 3-1 defeat at Anfield yesterday against Liverpool. There seems to be a real divide coming out of this match uh, as to what people's opinion is regarding the game. A lot of people seem to be very encouraged by the performance. A lot of people are really disappointed with, with, with the manner of the defeat. Um, and there are definitely two ways of looking at this game. I'm doing this review about 24 hours after the final, which I just think it's good to have a bit more of a a rational perspective on these games and and take a look at how the rest of the weekend has panned out. We've seen United lose at home to Crystal Palace. We've seen Spurs lose. They've just lost at home to Newcastle. So we finish this weekend still in third place. It doesn't look too bad on the face of things. And as to be said, uh, we've beaten Newcastle away, something Spurs aren't able to do at home. So it's it's encouraging to see that. It's, it's, it's good to see United lose at home to Crystal Palace. Apologies, United fans. But from my point of view, it's, it's very, very good to see that happening. And I think um, there are a lot of positives to take out of this game at Anfield. Obviously, it's disappointing because we did show so many signs of positivity in this game. Nicola Pepe, for one, I thought was excellent whenever he got the ball. He made some really, really encouraging runs going forwards. It was the first time in a, in a, in a long time that I was seen Van Dijk actually look a little bit uh, look a little bit cautious around a player. Robertson, he really had this guy on toast. Um, Pepe was just excellent against those two players, Robertson and Van Dijk. So really good performance from him. Joe Willock, once again, was excellent. Um, and I think the first thing to talk about is the team lineup that Unai Emery put out because there's been a lot of a lot of uh, discussion around the team he played, the formation he played, the 4-3-1-2 system that he seemed to deploy. Um, whether it works or not, it, for me playing so narrowly against not only two of the best fullbacks in the league, but two of the best wingers in the league in Salah and uh, Mane, who Mane was, was kept fairly quiet in this game. But Salah, I mean, you could just, you could see the problems that we had with that formation in the manner of the way that Liverpool scored their goal through Salah, the third one, um, just completely tore David Luiz to shreds and uh, took advantage of the space in behind, which, which we really left ourselves open to by playing so narrowly. Um, but we did compact the midfield. And uh, I think that was, was the game plan that Uno Emery set out to do and catch Liverpool on the counter-attack. And the frustrations lie in that we were dominated in that first half I don't think any Arsenal fan would, would disagree but we had the more clear-cut chances um Liverpool had one very good chance with Sadio Mane, which we would have put them 1-0 up. Danny Sabah just gifting it to Mane. And if it wasn't for a great save from Leno, that would have gone in the back of the net. So hats off to Leno, who made some very good saves in this game and is having a very positive start to the season. Um, but we should have gone 1-0 up through that Bamiyang chance. Uh, admittedly, it was a difficult one to take, but a uh, couple of inches to the right and that goes in. That Pepe chance where he skinned Robertson. A uh, little bit more confidence. If he'd already scored in the game against Burnley, perhaps, if he had a bit more confidence behind him, that would have gone in. He just needs to lever it a bit more especially against a keeper like Adrian, if he'd have hit it a bit harder with a bit more composure, a bit more confidence, I'm get, I'm certain that would have been 1-0. Um, but it, it's still very positive signs, very early days from Nicola Pepe. He just needs to get that goal. But his dribbling ability, his power, his prowess, we've got a real player on our hands here. So I'm very, very excited about what he can do. I was a bit disappointed with Aubameyang, to be honest. I thought he was very quiet in this game. Um, contributed, of course, to Torreira's goal, but I feel like he could have done a bit more. Had, had a good chance to score as well, which he spurned. Um, not just that, that initial one, where he tried to lob it, but that second one as well, where he uh, he just left his his, his um, I think it was Matic that came in and made a challenge on him. I'm not sure if that was he was offside in that instance, but it just again it was a very unabamyang like performance. And hopefully against Tottenham next week, he'll be able to uh, put in an, in in a goal scoring uh, game like he has done in previous fixtures already this season. But um, yeah, we had those two chances to make it one 0 and despite being bullied you could say in that first half I do think we had a real chance to to take the lead in this game which I think would have been very very impressive with the team lineup that we see we uh, we put out there one thing that no one is talking about and maybe it's because they've been fixtures in the starting 11 already this season but we started this game with two 20 year olds in midfield in Guinduzi and Willock now Guinduzi's practically played a full season at Arsenal and people seem to look at him as a mature senior player already but he is only 20 years old Willock who's barely featured for Arsenal before this season it has to be said in his now a fixture in the starting 11 um, you know these are two very young players and I feel like if it was Liverpool that was starting two 20 year olds in midfields every Sky pundit would be creaming themselves about it but the fact it's Arsenal I mean it's just I felt like that wasn't talked about Maitland Niles at right back as well 21 years old uh, Danny Sabias only 23 um, I feel like that was something that was a little bit underlooked and it has to be said that Joe Willock especially held his own extremely well in this game I think he even performed Jordan outperformed Jordan Henderson um, so massive credit to him and if he carries on the way he does I think there's an England call up around the door I'm, I'm not over exaggerating that he is genuinely one of the best young players I've seen in an Arsenal shirt um, since probably since Jack Wilshere I think he's a real promising central midfielder and if he keeps keeps 
boost this up. I, I can't see him really getting dropped from the starting 11. Uh, Quinthuzi, on the other hand, I don't think he necessarily did anything wrong, but I don't think he was as good as he has been in previous fixtures. Um, and Torreira, when he came on, really made a statement, and I think he, he showed exactly why he should be starting in that game against Spurs. For me, if we're going to make any changes for that game, I probably would bring Torreira in for Guinduzzi and maybe maybe see a midfield two of Torreira and Ceballos, and then... I'm saying Moza Ozil ahead of them, but we didn't see him even feature on the bench in this game. Question marks as to why that was. I was really surprised to not see him start. Uh, not start, but at least feature on the bench, considering he's had a full week of training. I was, you know, raising question marks about that. Whether he'll be back for the game against Spurs remains to be seen. I don't think he'll come into the starting eleven. so maybe Torreira, Willock and Sabahs ahead of them. That could be a very likely midfield three. Um... Granite Jack has seemed to get a lot of uh, a lot of criticism online, and I'm not too sure as to why that was. I don't think he had a bad game. I don't think he had an outstanding game, but he did create that chance that we had for Torreira's goal, and his long passes were key to most of our attacks going forward in this game. And uh, I don't think he's he should be at the, the wrong end of any criticism because I don't think he necessarily did any worse than some of the players on the pitch. But what I did like about this Arsenal performance was that even at 3-0 down, we kept going. It wasn't, It wasn't. even though the score was 3-1, it wasn't exactly embarrassing, I thought. Um, we we got the goal and uh, towards the end, which is admittedly a consolation, but I think it really underpins the spirit of this team and the fact we want to keep going and want to keep improving. And I do think we look a lot better than we did going to Anfield a couple of years ago. I mean, uh, if we hadn't conceded that header... Uh, 40 minutes in, which was a real, real shame. Um, if we'd have gone into half-time at 0-0, if Nicolas Pepe takes that chance, Nicola Pepe, sorry, uh, this could have been a very, very different game. Um, but the fact is, it's football, you lose games, and sadly, we are in a very transitional phase. We've got a lot of players, a lot of new players coming into the team, gelling, getting used to the league. Nicola Pepe is one of them, Danny Sabahis is another. And it's going to take a while for these players to integrate. And uh, the fact of the matter is, Liverpool were going into this game Practically a full flow with their strongest team out. We've got Bellerin and Tierney, our first choice fullbacks to come in. We've got Rob Holding to come back. We're still trying to work out what our best 11 is exactly, which is probably going to take a long while with Unai Emery as such a pragmatic manager. But that's one of the one one things that does worry me a little bit. Liverpool clearly know their best 11. City are got, starting to get that way as well. They've got so many options, but they do know their key 11. We don't at all. And uh, that's something that Emery, I think, has to really work on in the next couple of weeks and months. We, I'd like to see an 11 that is that is a fixture with a group of players that are, are known for playing together. I don't think we have that, and I don't think we had it at all last season. So that's something that I think um, I would like to see at some point soon. Uh, but, I mean, the defence was... Um, I thought it was OK until we conceded that goal. And then the second half, we unfortunately collapsed for a very poor... Mistake from David Luiz pulling on the shirt of Mohamed Salah, which he didn't have to do at all in that situation. Of course, that's the bad side of David Luiz, who I think had had a very good game up until that point. No nonsense, clearing everything, putting in some good tackles. I thought he was very resolute at the back. And fair play to him for coming out and apologising, saying he's not hiding straight after the game. I do like that in a player. Uh, but again, that's the rash side of David Luiz. That's the side we don't want to see. So... I want to say, let's see less of that, but I think it's inevitable we're going to see more of that throughout the course of this season. Um, and Socrates as well is a player that is very, very... Uh, can be calamitous at times. Um, he, do, he is prone to making errors, prone to making quick, rash uh, decisions. So I think Luis Socrates isn't a viable partnership in the long term for this season. I want to see it be either Luis and Holding, Luis or Chambers, Socrates or Chambers. One of those two more erratic defenders alongside someone with a bit more level head. Uh, that's what I want to see. And I'm still perplexed as to why Chambers has been dropped after that game against Newcastle, where I thought he played well. I think Emery has got a decision to make against Spurs, and I do think he'll probably go Luis and Socrates again. But I probably, personally, as soon as Holding's back, drop one of them for um, for him, because I think Holding's going to be imperative to, to any success we have at the back this season. Um, but, I mean, defending first 40 minutes was encouraging, I thought. It, it looked a lot better than it has done in previous seasons, and we did keep Liverpool quiet. And I think a lot of that was down to Unai Emery's game plan. Second half, giving away the penalty, killed the game at 2-0 for me. Um, I think it was going to be very, very difficult for us to come back from that. And then Salah skinning David Luiz, whose confidence had been rocked by giving away that penalty. And then, uh, yeah, puts it in the back for 3-0, back in the net for 3-0. Um, and then that, that really was game over. But thankfully, it didn't go to, you know, the 5 6 nil humiliations that... Um, I think we've been used to in previous seasons, so uh, we kept it sort of honourable. Three uh, one. I mean, it's 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 not the worst looking scoreline, but it's not by any means a scoreline that I'm particularly happy with. Uh, but I think 
later on in the season um, when we play Man City away, when we play Liverpool at home. I really think when the team's gelled a bit more, we can give these sides a real game. And that's what excites me. A couple more transfer windows. And I'm, I'm yeah, I am encouraged by what this team is doing. Um, but we've got Spurs next week and it's imperative that we beat them now based on uh, their, their results today. Based on the rest of the league's results today, I mean, it's, it's, it's important that we get back to winning ways and put this defeat to the back of our minds as quick as possible. But um, yeah, one quick talking point as well that people seem to be picking up on today across Twitter is the shirt pull from Vir- Virgil, Virgil, Virgil van Dijk on Nicola Pepe. Um, it's clever how he's done it. It's, it's quite interesting that he stayed incredibly close to Pepe and pulled on his shirt. Uh, in a way that kind of makes it look like he's not pulling on his shirt. And to be honest, I'm not going to go into a massive rant about how that should be a penalty for us. Um, but I feel like if we're going to use make use of VAR, then that is something that should have been should have been checked uh, because you've got to keep it consistent across the boards. And that's if, if Liverpool are getting a penalty for a shirt pull, then we should have had a penalty for a shirt pull. But whether that would have changed the outcome of the game, who knows? Um, it's in the past now. It's done. Don't want to dwell on it any longer. But we've, we've finished this weekend still in... Third place, so it's not. It's uh, it's three games into the season, um, and at least we've got this game out of the way when the stakes aren't as high as they will be in six, seven months' time. So, yeah, good, good, um, good weekend for us, even though we've lost, I suppose. And we've got to beat Spurs now. It's as simple as that. We've got to beat Spurs, and I want to see a pragmatic starting eleven from uh, from Unai Emery. Lacazette, I thought was actually really good when he came on. Um, so I, I even though I do think it has got his flaws, I probably would be inclined to go Lacazette, Bamiyang, Pepe at home to Spurs. At, at home, we've got to be going for this game, and then a midfield free of Torreira, Sabios, and Willock. Um, Sabios, I have to say, I thought he looked out of, his, out of his depth in this game. He tried to do very early on what he was doing against Burnley, the twisting, the turning. It's not really going to rub off against players like Fabinho, um, like Wijnaldum that are senior veterans. Uh, I say senior veterans, but players that are experienced. Um, but yeah, I mean, I think, as I say, I'm disappointed that the media haven't really talked about the fact that we had two 20-year-olds in midfield, a 23-year-old as well, coming up against the likes of Fabinho, Wijnaldum, Jordan Henderson, two players that are practically a decade older than Guendouzi and Willock. So yeah, um, I'm encouraged by the youthfulness of this team, the spirit going forward. And as I say, i can't say it enough times. We've got to beat Spurs. We've got to beat Spurs. We have to. Um, but anyway, I'm going to leave it there, guys. Let me know your thoughts on the game in the comments below. Drop a like on the video if you have enjoyed it. Subscribe to the channel if you are new. And I'll be speaking to you very, very soon. See you later, guys.